So over the course of about two years, I've been building Notion systems for over 50 different agencies. And each one of my clients had one thing in common. They wanted to scale. So I put together the ultimate Notion setup for agencies that does just that. And I'd like to share it with you today. Now, this isn't just a Notion template. It's a fully fledged business system and it combines all of the best features that I've come across when working with real world clients. In this video, I'd like to show you just three ways you and your team might start using Notion for agencies. And of course, links are down below in the description where you can download the template. Use case number one managing your clients. So the first step to scaling is honing each and every single one of the processes that comes into contact with your clients so that your customer journey stays consistent and you encourage repeat business. So for Notion for Agencies, this starts at our CRM tracker or our client relation manager. So here we have a really robust sales pipeline where you can capture new leads, track them through the sales pipeline and then eventually turn them into client projects once you have won them. So let's capture a new lead to start. So let's say we have a new lead, someone called Katie Smith, and we can come and capture her email. And then we can come and fill in some of the information that it's asking for us to fill in here. So we can say her company, let's say she runs a marketing agency named Marketing Agency Co. We can say which industry this is in. So let's say this is marketing. We can say what relationship we are to Katie. So at the moment she is a client and then we can create a client project uh, lead out of this. So we would call it the same name as the company. So this is a marketing agency co project. We can add a project span if we have any idea of what that would be. And then we can put in whoever's going to be the sales lead or the, the account holder for this. So let's come and find our CSO Theodore. And now we can see the rest of the information has been filled in. We can add the services. And this is where we have a estimated value calculator built straight into Notion for Agencies. So based on the standardized pricing that you've set for your services, if I now go ahead and say that Katie is looking for a growth strategy and a social media manager, you'll see now the estimated value has been calculated at 10,000 based on those prices. And then also we have a built-in referral tracker. So if Katie actually says she has someone who would also be interested in receiving some help, she might say, Nathan, Ian wants some help. We can capture Nathan straight from here. And now he has been set to our referral, which I'll show you in a second. So if we come out of here, now we can see that the marketing agency co is in the lead part of our sales pipeline. And because we already have another client here, Grandma Gus, we have their estimated value is 10,000 and looks like they've actually uh, chosen the same services. And so because Katie is looking for services that reach 10,000, we now have a sum of estimated value at 20,000. So as we take uh, Katie through the sales pipeline, we're always able to track at what part of the sales pipeline have we got um, uh, the most amount of money. So let's say Katie makes it all the way to the proposal stage of the sales funnel. Um, we can now use our built-in proposal creator to create a proposal for Katie within Notion for Agencies. So what I'm gonna do is come to edit and you'll see there's a section that says add proposal. So I'm going to add a proposal and just call it Watch the AZ Co proposal. And we can even say which quarter uh, this happened in. So Q3, Q4, 23. But if we click inside of it, so now within 30 seconds, we have a fully functioning proposal that we can send to Katie. And it has a template for us to fill everything out, including overview, proposal, project goals, but what we also have here is the deliverables and a project timeline. So we know that Katie is looking for growth strategy. So what we can do is we'll add growth strategy as one of the deliverables and we can add a description to explain to Katie exactly what this service would provide. We can then uh, decide on a price. And of course, this may be negotiated. So let's say we're looking at 6,000 for the growth strategy. And now we've added it hidden here as deliverables, we can add it to the timeline. So if I come down to timeline and we have one option here, I'm gonna click it so it jumps onto our timeline. And let's say it's gonna start in October and finish at the end of the month. So I'm just gonna drag this all the way down like this. And let's say that actually it's gonna finish halfway through November. And now this is in the timeline and we can even click into it and we can see all of that information from this page. And now once we've filled out this entire proposal, we can go ahead and just 
go to share, hit publish, we can publish to web, and then we can send Katie a link, and then she'll be able to see this proposal, read all the information, even if she doesn't have a Notion account. And finally, let's say Katie loves the proposal, she's happy to go ahead with starting with us. All we have to do is drag her particular project into the one dash onboarding status. And now that's turned a CRM project instantaneously into a client project that the fulfillment team can start work on. So let's jump into that. So here we are on the client projects and portals page, and you can see in our client project section, we have Katie's project, the marketing agency co sitting, waiting for the fulfillment team to begin the onboarding process. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a client portal for Katie. So again, we're going to hit edit, add client portal, and we're going to call it marketing agency co client portal or portal hit new and just like that we've created a separate page to send information to for katie and she'll then have a dedicated client portal that she can use inside a notion to see everything we're working on and so if we open this project page what can we see well first of all we have all of this lovely metadata about the project and then going down i'll show you what we have First of all, we have that proposal and project timeline inside this project page. And what's great about this is it gives a really clear alignment between the sales team and the fulfillment team. And so instantaneously, the client fulfillment team can see what was promised to the client and make sure that they're delivering on those promises. Then if we go down, you'll see we have tasks, meetings and resources that can be captured for this project to manage it and, and, and move it along. Um, but you also notice in the task section, we have some pre-populated onboarding tasks that have appeared automatically. And so now the client fulfillment team can start going through their onboarding checklist and really getting this project up and running. So we spoke about the client having a, their own separate dedicated client portal. So how do we send information to that? Well, let's say for whatever reason, we might want to send the fact that we're sending them kickoff materials as a task. Or what we can do is come over to where it says client portal and we're going to find that marketing agency client portal and we're just going to tag it with this task and now if we were to go up here and we can find the client portal from here we can open it up and take a look at what they see so they have this welcome message there's a tutorial video to show them how to use the page but they essentially have tasks that we've sent them so as you can see we have that kickoff materials tasks and then also meetings and resources and so what's great about this is that we, the internal team have their own separate page to be working on things. And maybe there'll be some tasks and meetings that we want to keep hidden from the client. And then we can pick and choose what we send to the client and they have their own dedicated page in Notion where they only have to think about going to one area to find things that we're sharing with them. Case number two, managing your team. Perfecting the way you manage and train your team is actually like a superpower because it allows you to begin working on your business instead of working inside of it. And that's what all of us business owners who are trying to scale are looking to achieve. And in Notion, this starts at our recruitment dashboard. So this recruitment dashboard is for your recruitment person um, to help them manage all of the new hires you might be taking on. So first of all, if there's someone else in the team, for example, someone in your C-suite who wants to request a new role, they can do so from going to the pipeline in here and hitting requests. So let's say the CSO is looking to hire a sales manager. Well, they can add that here. They can say what priority level this is. Let's say it's medium priority and then they're just going to tag themselves as hiring manager. So let's find Chief Sales Officer Theodore. Now, what's great about this is just from creating that page, if we open it up, this is now a dedicated page where the hiring manager and the recruitment person can work together uh, to collect all the information they need to then begin the recruitment process. So first of all, this will start with filling in the properties. So the hiring manager will come in and add if this is particular to a location, what department this falls in, so this is for sales, what level in the company this person would be, so this is a manager, any ideas for different types of titles, they can brainstorm here. They can add a target start date when they want this person to start, let's say it's the end of the month. And then also they can assign who would be their managers and their reports by role. So for example, their manager would be themselves, the CSO, and then let's say their reports would be the current sales associate. And then from here, we have a five step process for the recruitment person and sell and hiring manager to go through. So we can add the request section, which would include creating a job description for this role. And of course, we have a job description template to help you there. 
Then we can go on to approval. So potentially the CEO might come in and say where this person will fit in with the current headcount if we have the capacity for it. And then also uh, take a look at the salary benchmarking to see if this is financially viable. Then the hiring manager and the recruitment person can go ahead and have a briefing meeting to talk about anything they need to cover before they actually begin interview processes. Then a job advert can be created by the recruitment person based on everything that the hiring manager has given them. And then finally, once they find a successful candidate who accepts their offer, they can create and add a personal dashboard straight from this page. So for example, let's say the person was Andrew Peters. We can create this. We can say who their manager is. So that's going to be our CSO, Theodore. We can say who their direct report is going to be. As we've already defined, that is going to be the sales associate, Olivia. We can add their home base. So they will be from London. And then we can also add their email. So this will be andrew at, at company.com. And now just by doing this for 30 seconds, we have created a dedicated personal dashboard for Andrew which we'll jump into next. So as you can see, this is the dedicated page that pulls in all tasks, projects, objectives that have been assigned to Andrew. So when he first joins, he can use this page to manage his day-to-day -day activities. But what this page is also great at is assisting with training and performance management. So for example, when Andrew first signs into Notion, he can find his personal dashboard and then he is prompted to go down to the My Task section and you can see we have this on and off boarding checklist. And again, pre-populated, we have an onboarding checklist for Andrew to start making his way through. So Andrew can come in he can start to complete the HR documents, sign them off as done, and then they're gonna clear from here. You also notice that we have some related SOPs. So for example, if he has a onboarding task like meet one-to-one -one with your manager, there might also be a related SOP that is managing one-to-ones, what to expect. So we can create this again, set and forget it. And now we have all of this great onboarding material that each one of our new hires goes through. Um, so our training is really consistent. Now to continue his training, Andrew can also come down to the My Role and Performance area. And you'll see we have a section called SOPs. And here he has found he's got two processes, the lead conversion process and lead generation process automatically appear in his uh, personal dashboard. And this is because we have assigned these two processes to our sales manager. And even though they're not assigned to Andrew specifically, because he is now our new sales manager, he receives these SOPs. And so in theory, if you've been documenting using the company wiki and Notion for Agency, which is fully built out, you can then know that where whoever joins the team, they can come down to the SAP section and also begin training just by going through the different SAPs which cover their day-to-day -day activities. And finally, this page also allows managers to manage their direct reports. So Andrew can come down to the direct report section. And first of all, he can see his one direct report, Olivia, and he has access to her personal dashboard. So he could actually jump in here and just take a look at what's currently on Olivia's plate by going down to her tasks and her projects. Also, he can see that she is currently onboarding and he has a progress bar to show her onboarding progress. If he wants to see that in more detail, he can come to the onboarding progress section and he can actually see exactly what tasks she has left to complete and maybe follow up with her to see how she's doing. And then finally, we have a performance review section. So from here, he can go to Olivia and he can actually create a new performance review for Olivia. We have the meeting date. And of course, if we open this up, we've got another dedicated template, this one for performance reviews. So we can see other previous uh, performance reviews, rating, accomplishments, peer feedback, high level feedback, development areas, all this good stuff. And then what's great about this is this is automatically shared to Olivia. So if we was to jump back to Olivia's personal dashboard within her, my role in performance, she can see she has that performance review from Andrew and she can take a look and see what notes he's made, perhaps ahead of their performance review one-to-one. -one. Use case number three, managing your business. So now that your clients are happy and your team are happy, you'll have more time to focus on what's important and that's actually guiding the direction of your business. And again, to do this, we have a dedicated planning dashboard inside of Notion for Agencies. So what this is, is all of the quarter planning and review from one page. So for example, let's say we can open up Q4 and start the planning. So what does that look like? 
First of all, again, we have just a simple text area um, to do any freehand planning. And then we have a section for planning objectives and key results, sales targets, and key performance indicators. So let's start with the objectives. Let's say an objective for the sales team is to increase quarterly revenue by 10%. Now we can start adding a target deadline for this. So let's say it is for the end of the quarter, December 31st. We can also add a lead. This might be for our CSO. We can add a supporting team. So this might be for that sales manager and sales associate. And then if we open up this page, we can actually start adding key results straight from this page. So for example, we might want to record 10,000 pounds of sales for a particular product. And then we can just, again, sign an owner for this particular key result. Let's say it's for Andrew. Um, we can add a unit of measurement. So this is going to be sales in product. We can say where we're currently at. So let's say we're at 2,000 and our target is 10,000. And now you see we get a progress based on that. And then we'll also see that we get a key result progress and then an overall progress. So 20% on this particular key result. And so overall we have a progress of 20% as well. For our sales targets, we will have sales targets based on particular services. So let's say we have one for growth strategy and then we can say this is a growth strategy sales target. So how many sales do you want to see for this particular service? Let's say we have a target of 6,000 and our actual at the moment is zero. And so the progress is showing 0%. And then finally, key performance indicators. So these are things that tend to stay the same over a course of time, because the idea of KPIs is that they're their key measurements that you're keeping an eye on. And if they start to dip below that, then you pay attention and make sure you maintain that part of the business. So we've already got sales call closing rate and email CTR, and you can see the statuses on both of them based on the average. But we might also click over to inactive and say we've got this customer referral rate, and actually we want to make this active again. And so now we have three KPIs. We might even say we don't wanna follow our email CTR anymore, and we can make this inactive, or we could create a new KPI um, from scratch. Now, now we've done the planning for this quarter, this hasn't actually been shared with the team yet until we're ready to share it. So what we can do is for the OKRs, we're going to just check them as live. For the sales targets, we're gonna check them as live. And for the KPIs, we just want to make sure that they're active. And then this will be sent across Notion for Agencies system dynamically based on the fact that we've now shared them. So let's show you what that looks like. So now in our company-wide team space, you can see we have our OKR overview and this quarter we can see we've got increased quarterly revenue by 10% and everyone can see the progress on that. In the sales team space, we have a sales targets page and we can see the sales team will be able to see this quarter's sales targets and then they can come in and add monthly sales logs each month to then add to the progress of this target. And finally, in the strategy team space or the management team space, we have this KPIs uh, dashboard. And again, we've got a similar thing to the sales targets in that we have the KPI at the top with an average and then the monthly KPI logs that the uh, strategy team can come and add each month. So again, links are down below in the description where you can get access to Notion for agencies. And if you do decide to get the template, please do consider leaving a review. If you found this video useful, please do consider checking out this one right here and subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.